Hi, it's Dwyer. RichardDwyer.co, my firm site. Always 1776.com. Today is Wednesday, June the 30th, 2021. Bill Cosby is now a free man. Let's talk about it, but first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> now let me start with just a couple of comments here. I believe the women, not just this accuser, but the other accusers. Right, that's the first point I wanna make. The second point I wanna make here is that there has been no finding whatsoever that Bill Cosby did not commit these crimes, right? No one has made a determination that Bill Cosby is innocent. Now let's talk about what I believe happened. <clears throat> You're the prosecutor. You get a case that quite frankly is salacious. You believe the victim, but you also understand that the state has to prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. And because of the way the situation was structured, involving drugs, possibly quaaludes, right? A meeting between friends in the victim's home the victim not being completely sure of exactly what happened because she was drugged, right? She knows she's victimized. She knows she did not consent. But there's a period in there where things are a little bit drugged out. Right? So, you're the prosecutor and you're talking to the accused <clears throat> who has a Dr. Huxable image. Right? Because of the nature of the crime, you understand that some people are going to be hesitant to believe the accuser's accusations. More importantly, you have a bigger problem than that a constitutional right in the United States that we hold sacred, right? The Fifth Amendment, the right against self-incrimination. You understand that you need something from the accused. You need an admission of some sort, but you can't force one. You understand too that while the accuser has located other people who've accused the accused of similar criminal conduct, you understand that a judge might be hesitant to admit their testimony. You also understand that an appellate court might overturn a verdict based in part on such testimony. So here you are and you're seated with Bill Cosby. You understand that you don't have enough to assure yourself a criminal conviction. You might even have doubts on whether you can get a conviction. Understand, rape, unfortunately, is often a he said, she said type of crime. That's hard to prove in a court of law, beyond a reasonable doubt. So you're with Bill Cosby. You're looking at him. You understand that he doesn't have to tell you anything at all. You understand the strength of the Fifth Amendment. 
But because you're a prosecutor, you want to make sure that the victim gets some justice, that the victim gets help in her civil case against Bill Cosby. So here's what Prosecutor Castor did. He reached a verbal agreement with Bill Cosby where Bill Cosby was obligated. This is according to media reports, Philadelphia Inquirer, for example. Bill Cosby was obligated to sit for a deposition in the civil lawsuit. Understand, if Bill sits for a deposition and has to answer questions because he's no longer at risk of criminal conviction, right? He's no longer at risk of self-incrimination under the Fifth Amendment. Then you realize that his testimony at that civil deposition might help the victim get some justice, <clears throat> right? Get a civil judgment against Bill Cosby or a civil settlement against Bill Cosby, right? You understand, given Bill Cosby's reputation, he's not going to want a civil judgment against him. If he submits to a civil deposition, then he's going to have to make incriminating statements that will cause him to settle the case. <clears throat> well, folks, Bill Cosby did settle the case. It's a confidential settlement agreement. We don't know its terms. Understand, because the prosecutor, and I'm not saying I would have made this decision, but because the prosecutor reached a deal, and it was a verbal deal, with Bill Cosby, not to prosecute him criminally in a case that was unlikely to result in a criminal conviction without some admission from Bill Cosby. What the prosecutor instead did was have Bill agree to a deposition under penalty of perjury in the civil case. It's at that deposition that Bill Cosby admitted to obtaining quaaludes, which he would sometimes give to his female friends. Understand, that admission at the civil deposition should not have been used in a criminal proceeding to convict Bill Cosby of the crime. Because the only reason Bill Cosby waived his Fifth Amendment right, the only reason Bill Cosby testified at that civil deposition was because he had been assured by the prosecutor that he would not be criminally prosecuted. So the appellate court, understanding that the Fifth Amendment is sacrosanct, it's sacred, right? Understanding that a prosecutor can't make promises to you that they aren't going to prosecute you and then betray that promise by doing just that, right? The Philadelphia Supreme, excuse me, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court ruled that Bill Cosby's admission couldn't be used against him. They also pointed out in the decision, and I have yet to read the decision, 
right? Because this news is fast breaking. I'm going off media reports. They also argued that the testimony of five women who claim to have been victimized by Bill Cosby in the past was incorrectly admitted into evidence. So the Pennsylvania Supreme Court, understanding that this is a high profile case, that the cat was out of the bag, that everyone knew about Bill Cosby's civil deposition admission, that the prosecution had promised him would not be used as the basis for a criminal prosecution. Right, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court realized that they couldn't put that cat bag back in the bag. And so they have ruled that Bill Cosby can no longer be tried for this crime. Right now, I know many people are unhappy. Right, but what I want people to recognize is that the prosecutor wanted Bill to have to spill the beans in the civil case. The prosecutor understood that the criminal case, the criminal case was going to be difficult to prove. Not that the crime didn't happen but that the prosecution would have a hard time meeting its burden of proof. So in a situation where the prosecutor did not think he would be able to get a criminal conviction, where the prosecutor understood that Bill had a Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, and that without Bill, admitting to certain facts that it would be hard to prove the criminal case, but that an admission would help the plaintiff, the victim, in the civil case. The prosecution told Bill that it would not prosecute him criminally if he sat for a deposition, civilly. Folks, that promise was enforceable, according to the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. Now what happened is that DA, the one who made the promise, got run out of office. The new DA comes in. Understand, it's still the same office. You can't be the new DA and say, you know what, we're not going to follow the promises made by the old DA. Even promises that impact an accused exercise of their Fifth Amendment constitutional rights. So understand, the new DA was bound by the promise of the old DA. The cat was already out the bag. Bill had already participated in the civil deposition. Bill had already revealed that he had obtained quaaludes. Right? It was based on that testimony that the earlier DA said they would not use. That the later DA tried Cosby. So I just want to assure everyone, no jury has found that Bill Cosby did not do this. Right? I just want to assure people that no determination has been made on whether Bill Cosby did this. 
Right? No one is there claiming that Bill Cosby did not do this based on some finding of the court. That's not what happened. Rather, what the Pennsylvania Supreme Court has done is said the Fifth Amendment is sacred. The agreement by the earlier DA not to criminally prosecute Bill Cosby if he submitted to a civil deposition was binding on the state of Pennsylvania. It was binding on the DA's office. That's what the case is all about, folks. The fact that the state can't lie to you to get you to waive your Fifth Amendment rights. Let me also point out, too, in closing, that the civil case settled. It's not like the prosecutor didn't do anything to help the victim. No, the prosecutor made the settlement possible by forcing Bill Cosby, who's older, to have to testify. Understand what would have happened otherwise. Bill would have been at the civil deposition and would have said, hey, I invoke my Fifth Amendment rights. I'm not going to answer any questions that might expose me to criminal prosecution. Right? Bill's older. He's a senior citizen. Today, he's in his 80s. Right? Bill's older. Without some deal from the prosecutor's office, Bill Cosby could have tried to play out the clock. Could have said, hey, I'm not going to testify. I'm not going to answer any incriminating question. And you can't force me to. As long as the possibility of criminal prosecution is hanging over my head. Right? The only reason he testified is because the prosecutor told him he would not be prosecuted. And it's because Bill testified and admitted to getting quaaludes that that civil case settled. And the plaintiff received compensation. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Share your understanding of the case. Tell us in the comment section of this YouTube video how you feel it should have been handled differently. Understand, the Pennsylvania Supreme Court is also upset that five women who claim they were sexually assaulted by Bill Cosby were allowed to testify, right, when there was no adjudication in court that Bill actually did those crimes. So the hesitation that the first prosecutor had actually ended up being reflected in the Pennsylvania Supreme Court appellate decision. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.